Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nerd Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And today we are going to be talking about um, a very interesting subject matter. You know, it's getting into the spring. This summer, I'm going to New Zealand for a week. Ma, what, you know, I know you're not coming on a trip. It's going to be crazy. You want to come on a trip? <laughs> it's a long ass flight, buddy. But what I want to really talk about is premium New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. We've done Sauvignon Blanc on Wine Library TV from New Zealand multiple times. As a matter of fact, Mott, link that up. Let's link up the last two or three times we've done it. Just do a little search in that top corner, see what you get. Um, always been a fascinating subject matter for me. There's a real love-hate thing going on from the consumers at this point in the US on this product because a lot of people feel that they're too sugarified, candy-esque, too grassy, too over the top. On the flip side, it continues to grow in market share. We continue to sell more and more New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, very high in fruit, very crisp to a lot of people, and a very easy drink in the summertime. Now, seven, eight years ago was really exciting because you can get these wines for six to eight to ten dollars a bottle max outside of the classic Cloudy Bay, which we have here on the show. They've really kind of crept up to that ten to fifteen dollar range now for the premium stuff. You could probably get some stuff under ten. Um, but what we have here is three classic uh, brands for many different reasons. Alan Scott, we've talked about when we had Mr. Arnold on the show. We wrote a book about Alan Scott. We've done Alan Scott prior. Chasing Venus, I almost am positive we've done a prior vintage and I loved it. I could be wrong about this one, but I'm almost positive. And then the wine that put the whole darn country on the map, Cloudy Bay Sauvignon Blanc, the first Sauvignon Blanc I remember being really, you know, passionate about. Everybody wanted it. It was on the cover of the Wine Spectator back in the late 90s, which really started the New Zealand revolution in the US. 94 point score. You know, everybody was like, what is this wine? Prior to that, really the only New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc that was asked for in our store was the Morton Black label that carried some sort of tradition and, and sought afterness, if that means anything. Um, but Cloudy Bay is probably the single most requested white wine at Wine Library still. It is still a top 15 searched item on winelibrary.com. It is a beast of a brand, and we're gonna put it to the challenge today as an 07, up against these two 2008s that we have here as well. We'll talk about food pairings, what we think about these wines, and I'm really excited. Notice all three screw topped it. Let's read some comments, Mott. What do you think? BF said, to our lovely March Madness show on Friday. Hey Gary, uh, like that Alaska commenter, I've been watching since episode 60 or so, learned a ton, favorite college is Georgetown, too bad they sucked this year. BF, I understand. You know, I like I have a little love for Georgetown because of Mr. Patrick Ewing, but Bobby Tiger says, love the blind tasting A 50, phew. You're way too young to remember putting cigarettes in the sleeve on your t-shirt. Sorry, I forgot. You live in New Jersey. And James Madison University, go heels for Bobby Tiger. Green P says, I like that name, I love that Michigan State took a dirt nap. Go Buckeyes, great show, love the blind tastings. Young Dave, one of the original Vaniac smot, uh, big fan of his. Uh, question today, my life, and this was, what is your favorite college? My life would be very different today without the guidance of my alma Alma mater, sorry, I don't even know where I went there. Emerson College, Young Dave doing his thing in LA in the wine scene, and Snarf was the first commenter yesterday, and he said, top five, that's what they do, pay attention. All right, so let's get into the first wine, the Alan Scott. Did you see where I went with Alma Mater? That was kind of weird, my, like my brain like just went, just thought that was interesting. Uh, Alan Scott, 2008 Sauvignon Blanc from Marlboro, uh, 12 bones, um, this winery we've talked about at length. Uh, if you're curious and interested in that kind of scenario, Ma, definitely link up the Eric Arnold Crut. You know, remember he was on the show with his New Zealand book? What was that called? I remember it. I mean, crush, my first, cr first crush. Very good, Ma. I'm sure that's correct. 12 Bones. Always like wines that are 12 Bones because that is Joe Willie Namath's number. So, you know, any jet band should love $12. Um, very light in color. Nothing too crazy. Uh, let's give it a sniffy sniff because that's what we do. Right off the bat, you know, it's that classic in-your-face bouquet. I mean, these wines are never aromatically challenged. If you love the nose as much as I do, these wines bring thunder in that scenario, no doubt. They are intense. There is no mistaking what this wine is in a blind tasting. Right away, you're like, that is so much fruit. Maybe a South African Sauvignon Blanc, but probably not. There's classic grassiness exploding on the nose. 
I get a little fig action on the nose, which I like a little bit as well. And there's also almost like, you know, a, uh, not, I want, I want, I want to say Febreze, but it's not Febreze, but it's so aromatic. It's almost like a, maybe like, like tile cleaner or something that has like a little bit of like a, of a lemon scent. It smells a little Mr. Clean like to me in that way. Uh, but the grass is coming through, a little lemon peel as well. Very, very aromatic wine. Let's give it a whirl. Thirteen percent alcohol content, you know, not coming through at all, which is great at room temperature. A little steely, have a little aluminum action coming on, and now I'm picking on the back end, uh, almost like, actually, yeah, it's very aluminum-like. As a matter of fact, it's like taking a baseball bat, cutting a bunch of lemons up, and then like squirting them all over the bat, and then licking that bat. That's what this tastes like, and clearly playing college baseball, no aluminum bats in the pros. So I'm getting that very steely, lemony kind of play, kind of basic, good mid-palate transition, so I will give this wine that. But it gets a little austere and awkward on the finish. Not super excited about that. Let me give it one more shot. Textbook classic New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, but unfortunately for me, I feel like I can get this kind of style at seven to ten dollars a bottle. So, at twelve, even though I'm not being you know raked by the price, I don't feel it delivers the quality price ratio that I may be looking for. To me, this is an eighty-six point wine, kind of basic, well structured, but lacking any charisma or anything outside the box that I could probably get again from that seven to ten dollar play in New Zealand. Um, and that kind of makes me sad and a little bit bored and. And then that's just it. So my, that's it. That's all I got. Let's move on. Chasing Venus. 2008 Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc. This wine rolls in at 14 US dollars. And uh, let's see what this little bad boy has. Again, Matt, do you remember? I'm almost positive that we've had this wine in show. I think I really, really liked it in a big, like, six or seven New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc tasting. But I remember being, like, passion for, remember being different. Let's see if that holds true. Let's give it a sniffy sniff again. The color is pretty much in the same ballpark. Now, this is even more grassy intensity. I mean, this really feels like I just mowed the lawn, picked up all the loose stuff, and just stuck it directly in my nose. There's a lot of grass coming through. There's also a little bit of, like, a, a dill component on this, which I kind of like. And also, if I, let me give it one more shot. Yeah, it's coming through. Like, almost... <laughs> like a, a sugared jalapeno action. So I get a little bit of that, like hot peppery thing going on, but it's kind of rounded with like almost like cantaloupe juice. So very sugary, kind of fruity, cantaloupey, definitely the grass thing going through. Dill-like intense, I kind of like this nose, but it's not the, what I remembered. Again, I thought it was more like a passion fruit, like a different kind of play. This is not, this is more, again, textbook New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc style. Let's give it a whirl. First and foremost, a completely different experience than the Alan Scott. It's got more weight. Um, there's more viscosity. There's more structure. It's just thicker. Um, I always say like kind of like milk to water in your mouth, that thickness. This is more like orange juice. It's a little thinner than milk, you know, just, but it's definitely heavier. This was just water-esque. This is not. This has a little bit more beef to it. The grassy flavors are very intense. It's high in acid, and if you're not into the pineapple juice meets grass kind of thing going on, you're not gonna like this wine because it comes at you and comes at you hard. It goes right down the palate. The acid in the back end does make this more of a food play. All of a sudden, I'm yearning for sushi, which has been something I've been pairing a little bit more often with New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, and, and that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, good structure, good length. Let me give it one more shot. Yeah, I mean, the grass is undoubtable. Um, for a lot of people that debate whether they like the grassiness, um, this is definitely one that you're not gonna have to, you're gonna have to be all in. I mean, this is not something that you're gonna be like, yeah, I kinda like the grass. If you don't, you can't drink this. The herbaceousness, um, the fruit, but I kinda like it. This is my kind of style of wine. Um, I like the acid on the back end. It makes it much more food friendly than the really thin Alan Scott effort. Um, I'm gonna score this wine 
89 plus points. There's something holding me back from 90. I can't put my finger on it. It's definitely not a 91 or 92 or that nature. Yeah, you know what? I'm being a little tough, Mott, for no reason. Let's give this wine 90 points. I like this wine. It's a good effort. It's very distinct to my palate. This is where you've gotta always do what you know. Trust your own palate. It doesn't matter where I come from. Yeah, I gave it 90 points, but take this review in. If you don't like the grass, you're going in the 70s because this wine it really tastes like eating lawn. Let's move on. The big boy. Cloudy Bay, 2007 Sauvignon Blanc from Marlboro as well. 23 US dollars uh, and easily the most recognizable and most sought after New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc in the world. Um, you know, just on every single wine list from top, you know, three star Michelins to, you know, Cheesecake Factory. I mean, this wine is everywhere. It's extremely strong as a brand. It's a, it's a very good wine. Um, normally, I've traditionally liked this wine. Let's see what's going on here. It's time for what I like to call a snippy sniff. Now, you know, it's really ironic. Three wines from Marlboro, three totally different noses. Uh, this wine has almost a uh, more of a minerality on the nose, almost Loire-like on the nose. There is that subtle grass that has just been undeniable all day today, but there's a little bit more of like crushed rock going on here as well. And I also get a little bit of like a pear component on the nose, which I like, like sweet Asian pear. So very nice nose, definitely more tame than the last two on the bouquet. Yeah, kind of nice. Let's give it a whirl. Good acid again. Reminds me a lot of the Chasing Venus on the palate, quite a bit actually. A little less intensity on that grassy, uh, you know, lawn-like play, but apples, maybe like very sour, sour apple flavors coming through here. Um, yeah, really, actually it does. It tastes like, I, I, I referenced Sour Patch Kids the other day and it's unfortunate like right behind it, there's another sour, but this tastes like an apple Sour Patch Kid. Like, you know, just that apple candy, but on a sour level. Um, good fruit on the back end, better acidity than the Alan Scott, probably a little bit less than the Chasing Venus, but maybe a little bit more balanced. Um, this is the kind of wine that would definitely go well with, you know, any kind of whole fish, uh, oysters, if you're a big like West Coast oyster fan as I am, Kumamoto's, Olympia, this would be a nice pairing. I'll give it one more shot. A mellow effort, um, but not bad. Again, all three wines are at room temperature, so I'm really tasting the essence. You know, it's okay. I wouldn't t so say that I'm in love with this wine. Um, I think the Chasing Venus is better. I think it's got a little bit more um, hop to its step and that's kind of what I'm looking for in my white wines. I like the acid. It was, it's what draws me to Rieslings and Gruners. Um, it's good, but I wouldn't say it's phenomenal. I'm gonna only go 89 points on this wine, which is fine, but given the hype, I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, I have been hot and cold with Cloudy Bay, but on a consistent level, it hasn't been like this. You know, they've just all been in that, in my own mind, that 88 to 91 point range. The 05 I really liked. Um, this 07 effort is pretty solid, um, but just not something that I'm like yearning to, to have to have and need. Um, all in all, pretty good. I'm gonna just actually really quick, because I was tight tonight. I was pretty, right, Mon, I'm doing a good job here. We're keeping it tight. Um, just taste this Chasing Venus after Trace the Cloudy Bay, just for kicks and giggles real quick. Almost like watermelon Jolly Rancher attack there this time. Um, definitely a little bit more of an intense acid play. That's what I'm looking for. I feel good about where we're at. I feel good about the show. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, very interesting subject matter to me. A lot of people are gonna be drinking it over the next three to four months. Make sure you explore and try as many different types as you can. Um, don't just go for the name brands as you can see. There's a $9 swing here and there's really no debate in my mind for my palate. Though it's one point. It's one very big point. Question of the day. What wines are you excited about to drink this spring? What type of wines, what winery, what do you got? Share a little something. You, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world.